Welcome to Survive and Thrive, DW Academy's dialogue with media managers on innovative and sustainable business models in a challenging global media landscape. We'll talk motivation, lessons learned, funding models, best practices, recipes for success, and decisions, good and bad. Hello, everyone. This is Janelle de on coming to you again with our Media Viability Podcast. Media around the world are facing a moment where it's getting increasingly difficult to stay operational in the face of various challenges, from conflict to financing, and as we'll learn more about in a moment, in the face of government harassment. As such, there is a need for media organizations to hear from each other and learn how we're all adapting to the environment we find ourselves in. At this stage, I'd like to welcome Laura Aguirre, a co-founder of Al Haraka, a feminist news website from El Salvador. Thank you for joining us, Laura. In a moment, we'll talk about Al Haraka and your experiences. But before anything else, this short questionnaire. Let's go. Your business model in a catchphrase. Not afraid of money. Did you ever manage a moment when everything seemed lost? Maybe November 2021, when the government of Nayib Bukele was almost approved a law of foreign agents. And what would you need to thrive in the future? Money and legal security and emotional and mental security. All very important things and we're so glad to have you here today. And as we said, we want to talk about what it means to stay viable as a media organization in El Salvador, where harassment is a fact of life for journalists, especially when covering corruption and organized crime. So you told us a little bit there in the lightning round, but can you tell us a little bit more about what it means to operate as a media outlet in El Salvador and what the environment there looks like? Well, right now, the political context in El Salvador is very complicated. Since 2019, uh, when Nayib Bukele rise to power, um, the persecution of journalists and media, uh, it's very, very hard. And, well, a lot of journalists are living outside of El Salvador. And, well, uh, we are trying to... We are thinking in journalists not as a more as a tool of democracy, but as a resistance. That is the the mood right now in El Salvador. So journalists as a part of the resistance. So maybe this is a good time to tell us what Al Haraka actually means. Yes. The word al uh, it's um, a word that in Spanish people use to uh, talk about someone that is exaggerated or as uh, very emotional about something that is not so important. So uh, it usually used to refer to women. And when we create Alaraka, we want to use this word like a provocation and, resi- and make a resignification of it and, uh, and trying to, to make a space for us the journalists, women that we are trying to do a different kind of journalist. So I suppose uh, in English, uh, we would say hysterical, the sort of gendered adjective that is, as you say, very often applied to women and in a way that is derogatory. So what you're in fact doing is reclaiming the hysteria. Making exactly. noise about things that are, in fact, important. Would you say that's right? Yes, exactly. And more in front of our uh, male colleagues that most of the time, male journalists in El Salvador are trying to not listen journalists, women who are identified themselves as feminists at the same time, because uh, they uh, sign us like uh, activists. And that is a very kind of a strange discussion, not for us as a women, but in the journalist eco- ecosystem, yeah. Why is it a strange discussion? Because uh, our male colleagues said that if you are a feminist, you cannot, you cannot be a journalist because uh, they relate the feminists automatically with activists and the activists is for them something like 
lying or fighting for a cause and you lose your, your objective case of journalists. No? This is the kind of discourse. This, uh, for me, it's not a discussion anymore. At the beginning, we are trying to be approved for this uh, in this ecosystem uh, in El Salvador because, well, in El Salvador, there's a very good journalist and journalist. But um, after some time, we understood that we, as a woman, we are doing our ourselves, and we are try and we are in fact changing the ecosystem in El Salvador. Most um, in the working culture and how journalists are, uh, work internal in the, uh, in the news medias. And well, for us, it's enough no, that we are doing our work and we are doing what we want, even when some people think that we are not real journalists. Now, that has a lot to do with the internal media landscape in El Salvador, as you said. But what about the public? How important is it for them to have a feminist news outlet mm -hmm. in El Salvador, especially in a country where there are problems that dominate the news, like corruption, mm -hmm. for example? Well, that was the big question when we create a Laraca. But um, after, after some months, we realized that there was a place for us and the people and the audience are looking for something like Alaraca. We are not doing journalists for women. This is the, sometimes the people say, ah, you are doing coverage about women things, you know? And that is not the kind of journalists that we are doing. We speak and we write about everything, but always with a feminist perspective. And we uh, are doing at the same time uh, innovation in narratives. And that is because we are, or we have a growing audience where, because in El Salvador, maybe we are the media that are doing more innovation in how we are telling the stories. Um, Usually, you can find a long, long, long text in El Salvador in the journalists and the journalist texts, but very, very long. And we are trying to experiment with uh, another formats and trying to talk in another ways to the audience. And I think the people is prepared to that. At the same time, we born in 2018. And that was a time when the Me Too movement and the feminist movement was arising and very strong in Latin America. And that was very positive for us because we are not talking in the middle of nothing, but in between this movement and the talking that are arising about them. Mm -hmm. So you were born in a specific context. Now, I just wanted to examine some of these layers, right? So we've established that it's quite difficult to operate as a news organization within El Salvador. And you have the added challenge of doing it from a specific perspective that is not perhaps widely known or made or has been made mainstream within the media landscape in El Salvador. Can you tell us a little bit more about like how you operate, what your business model is like? Mm -hmm. Well, I always say that Alaraca is a multi-situated project because uh, the three co-founders, we are living in Germany. We are uh, from El Salvador, but we are living in Germany and we thought in Alaraca from here. Mm -hmm. But um, at the same time, we have a team of 10 people in El Salvador Another uh, teammate is in Spain and another one in the United States. So at the beginning, you know, we always want to make something that we can do from everywhere or with people from El Salvador that are in other countries. And after 2019, uh, we realized that it, this is a, a really good advantage that our team is not only in El Salvador, but outside of El Salvador. And uh, well, at the beginning was a little complicated because it's not the same trying to manage a team in different places. 
And because no one in of the co-founder, neither I, neither I, we study like a MBA degree or management or something like that. I'm uh, You're I, learning I, as you go along. Exactly. And well, that's this. Um, yeah, it's it's a kind of journey, you know, a long journey, but a very rich one. And right now, I feel that we are prepared and well, still preparing for the future, but we have more tools than other medias because we are operating in different countries. And I was also wondering, you have this very specific business model. You are situated in many sites, as you've pointed out. How do you finance your operations? How does Al Haraka make money? Yes, we have uh, two main ways of incomes. No? The the big one is uh, that we have grants, uh, grants from international organization, philanthropic organization. But at the same time, we have a business model uh, which generates our own incomes. Mm. At 2021, we start with um, like a consult- consultancy agency. And we did um, communication strategics for clients and campaigns about gender and diversity topics. And that is our specialization. Uh, we are specialized in this in these topics. And well, it was a very good year because we realized that uh, in El Salvador and Central America, there's a need uh, of uh, agency that could speak and could lead about these topics, no? because there's a lot of misinformation about gender and diversity. Uh, still, there's a lot of misinformation. Um, but uh, in 2022, we decided to think more to create a organiz- uh, an organization or a company outside of El Salvador. No? And that is what we are doing right now. We are trying to create uh, a other organization or organization in outside El Salvador because we want to try to do this business model not in El Salvador because of the risk of persecution in the future, in the near future. So what you're trying to do is you're trying to diversify your income streams by creating another company within Yes. Germany, perhaps a social um, a social entrepreneurial company within Germany, and in so doing, you hope to be able to de-risk your business at some point. You've also mentioned earlier that you're not afraid of money. I think this is a very relatable thing <laughs> that most people will also say. I think most people aren't afraid of money, but what do you mean specifically when you say that? Well. Uh in the ecosystem ecosystem of journalists, no, it's usually, I, I don't know, the people say that journalists don't think in money. No. They, we, as journalists, we don't have to think on money because it's something like dirty or something like, I don't know, something bad. No, uh, Maybe if you have a, man- a manager who think in that, it's okay. Or I don't know, someone in administration, but journalists never think in money, not just in doing journalists. It's supposed to be powered by idealism. Yes, of course. And well, I, I don't judge. <laughs> but in the real world, we have to think in money. And I don't know, maybe the women, because we are... We have to think always in money because we have to maintain our families or take care of someone. The money is always present in our life, no? And since the beginning, I know that if we want to to build a project that sustain in the future, we have to think in money. Not only make money to pay salaries, but make money to make decent work, you know, to make a, a place where the people feel good to work and and can grow professionally. You know? So, yeah, um, I'm not afraid. I think that the journalists need money, a lot of money. And of course, uh, I'm, lear- I'm learned how to find this money in grants. I, I find that I'm very well doing that, finding money and and 
talk with people and making PR. But at the same time, uh, we need um, our own business model. No? That, uh, that is the big challenge right now. I think that's quite an interesting discussion. You know, In a way, it's also related to how much audiences think they should pay for journalism, whether journalism is something that should be invested in. Mm-hmm. Because I think a lot of people think that because it is a public good, it, it should be divorced from the question of financing. And obviously, media outlets need to be able to survive. Having said that, what have your biggest challenges been in terms of your survival? Financial survival? Well, uh Finding the money, of course, is the big challenge mm-hmm. uh, because, as you say, a uh, journalist is la- a public good, but not all the people understand that. No? And, and it's very different how we understood understand the journalism here in Europe. Yeah, and we have the Deutsche Welle or the BBC in England that have public funds. No? And that is very different in Latin America. We never think uh, about that the government call financial uh, some kind of journalism or that we can get some public funds that is not possible in Latin America and, and never think about it. So if you want to be an independent, uh, independent media, you have to find your own money. That is the rule, no? Right, so taxpayer-funded models like Deutsche Welle and like the BBC in of the course, UK but is not really something common in Latin America. Not at all, not at all, uh, because, well, the tax system is very different here at, at there, no? And thinking about something like that is not possible in Latin America, no? I'm not saying that it's bad here and good there. No, it's that it's very different. And the one of the biggest challenge is, of course, finding the money in other places, no? The, the favorite uh, way is looking for grants, no? And that is very good. There's a lot of money right now in Central America because... Well, there's a lot of problem right now, so the international cooperation come and try to help. No, but that is not sustainable right now. There's a lot of co- international cooperation, but I don't know how long will be there. No, and the challenge is to find another way to make money in a country where political situation is very complicated and maybe will be more complicated next year when the president re-elect himself. No? And, and because of that, uh, we are trying to make the disorganization and enterprise outside of El Salvador because I think it's uh, very important to think that you have to make money in other countries, not there uh, because uh, it's uh, one of the favorites weapon right now of the government uh, trying to persecute the medias with the f- taxes and things like that, you know? Mm-hmm. So you're saying that in El Salvador, media outlets often experience financial persecution from the government in the yes. sense that they're taxed unfairly? Is that is that what's happening? Not only that, because... <clears throat> uh, the the government are trying to find if the medias are doing law laundry of money money laundry. laundry. Yes, yes, that is the more usual uh, persecution, and and yes, uh, well, uh, even if you pay taxes, even if you pay all that you have to pay, you have in the risk that the government fi- finds something, you no, know, trying to find something that at the at the end. Uh, is uh, will be worse for the media. No, you will be in jail, or your media will be closed, or something like that. No, and we are well. I'm 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 thinking in the worst scenarios. No, and but we have uh, Nicaragua beside us. You no, know, next to us is Nicaragua with a uh, well, very complicated, more complicated context. But it's not so far away of us. No, and yeah, be, yeah. Now, so you've pointed to some of the steps that you're taking. You're trying to base some of your businesses abroad. You're trying to make sure your income streams are diversified, as you said earlier. Where are your audience? Where are your 
users? Mm-hmm. Well, um, our main audience is in El Salvador, and they are women between 25 and 40s. And, well, and, but we don't have audience only in El Salvador. Our, the second main audience is in Mexico and the rest of um, Central America countries. Some people uh, is in the United States, and the little, the little, uh, the little audience is in Europe because we are here. No? And some we have some networks here, but yeah, Central America, and Mexico is the strong audience of Alaraca. You're clearly in a phase where you're trying different things. So as you said earlier, you were born in a moment. You were born within the Me Too movement. Mm-hmm. You've had to adapt your organization according to according to what's happened politically in El Salvador. How would you describe how Al Haraka has changed over the years since it was born? Mm-hmm. Well, um, in 2018, when we were born, it, it, we create Al Haraka because we have a, a necessity. We need our own space, and we were we were very tired to be in these traditional medias, even the digital medias, where we have to explain almost every day why it's important to have a feminist perspective or a gender perspective in our covers. No? Uh, also, we are very tired of that, and we decided to, to make our own space. No? And, uh, well, that's just the beginning. No? And we uh, work under this uh, objective in 2018, 2019. But when the new government uh, come, came, uh, we have to adapt a little. Always, of course, we uh, always uh, made uh, journalists with a feminist perspective, but we pay a lot of attention in the human violation that are occurring right now in El Salvador because of the uh, regime of exception uh, that um, is in El Salvador since one year ago. Um, so uh, that is the big difference right now. And we have to adapt our cover to this kind of topic, you know. And it's it was a very a big change for our team because um, at the beginning we. Uh, of course, we are, we are, co- we were covering uh, inequ- social inequalities and journey inequalities and trying to denounce. But at the same time, uh, we we have a lot of we had a lot, uh, we had a lot of um, hope and with uh, what we are doing. No, uh, after we after 2019, when or, or since last year more. Uh, the team have a lot of problems trying to 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 have hope in the future, to believe that we can change something in El Salvador very soon. And well, that is a big change too, because at the beginning I never think in the mental health, for example, of my team. And <clears throat> we thought that we can motivate ourselves, just that, no, it's, it's enough with that. But uh, since last year, every journalist in the team has uh, psychological support. And we are very aware that some of them are suffering because of depression or because anxiety. And... And that is something that most of the news uh, newsrooms never thought, no, never think yet. Mm-hmm. I think this is quite uh, significant to highlight, of course. When we talk about viability, we're very often talking about the financial operations of a media outlet. But of course, the most important resource for mm-hmm. any media outlet is its journalists, its yes. staff, the people who make it happen. Now, since you started providing psychological support uh, mm-hmm. for your staff has have they felt more hope i don't know if they feel more hope but at least they feel better you know they um, 
they feel that, um, or I'm trying that the, our, our newsroom works like a safe place, like safe place where they feel safe. No? And if they have a problem, if they don't want to make a cover because it's so so hard to, to do some things about human violation, they can say, no, I don't want to do that. I Right now, I cannot to do that. Um, also, at least they feel that they have, or they trust that we can hear that, no? that we take account these conditions and these feelings and this emotional um, condition that they have. No? About hope, well, that's another topic, I think. No? We, are try as we are trying to, to maintain the hope um, but in an, in an, with another tools, no? And I can tell something like that right now. Okay. Um, for example, we um, change our covers to, I have to say that before, but uh, we are trying to do not only journalists for denounce human violations, but we are trying to do constructive journalists or some people say solution journalists, but we prefer constructive journalists. And what this is about uh, trying to tell stories, different stories, not only uh, when people suffer, that is very important, of course, to denounce that, but trying to tell what the people do even in the worst situations, even in situation or in context with everything look like it's lost, no? or seems like it's lost. And well, we are uh, telling stories about social organizations, about civil organization and civil participation. Uh, what it means, um, it telling stories on how people in the communities organize themselves and trying to solve something. Um, they demonstrate in the street together or they are trying to build something in their communities and trying to make money for themselves, like uh, communities banks, uh, women that are leading communities banks. And that was very useful. It's very useful for the team because they are, they are see or they are see that not all the people is suffering, but the people is resisting and the people is trying to, to make a future, even in the, in the, uh, in the currently context. And, um, and well, another way to have hope, I think that uh, we change the, um, how we understand and or understand ourselves. Because in journalists, Usually, we saw the journalists as heroes, no? the, and they are. There's a lot of people who are giving their lives for the journalists, no? But I, we don't understand ourselves as heroes. But um, I always say that we are witnesses. We are the witnesses. We are the documentarians of our time. And that is very important because maybe we don't or we cannot change the things right now. I don't have that hope, no. But I think that we will be very important for the future because we will be the source of information for the next generation. And we are building the counter-narrative of the official one no? the, that the government are trying to build. And because of that, our work is very important because we are the witness of the time. There is a reason why they call news the first draft of history, of course, and you've just explained it there beautifully. Um, I'd like to thank you for that. I also wanted to ask, do you also find it important? Do you also find it useful to have partnerships, for example, with other media organizations? I understand Deutsche Welle, of course, has also been in a partnership with Al Haraka, mm -hmm. the Academy in particular, is that something where you would encourage others to do the same? Of course. And, well, I think that is part of our feminist perspective. Now, as a feminist, it's very important for us 
to work with others in alliances, with others, medias, and with social uh, organizations. Mm. So uh, we, uh, Alaraca has a opera operative director and the, this colleague uh, see all the agreements and alliances that we have with other medias. We make a lot of collaborative investigations, but at the same time we are we are doing collective investigation. And this is a we differentiate this kind of uh, work because the collaborative investigations are more like well we we put together. Uh, or different investigation, and we make a, 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 a um, like um, collective publication. No? But in the collective work that we are trying to develop, or methodological trying to develop, we are uh, working since the beginning with other people in trying to produce journalists with other people and produce our content with, for example, with the protagonist of our stories and trying to, to create our content with the social civil organization, for example. No? And that is um, something that for us is very important, trying to think ourselves as in collective way, in a collective way. And... But not all the newsrooms think like that right now, no? Uh, I think it's very important because when we are together, we are stronger and strongest. But, um, but, well, we will see in the future if it's something that others media want to do. Mm -hmm. But right now, we have agreements with uh, almost 10 medias in Latin America feminist medias and not feminist medias, uh, agreements for publications and republications. And we have um, two projects where we create in a collective way content. Mm -hmm. You've pointed out that there's strength in numbers, that there's strength in cooperation. Now, our time together is drawing to a close, but before we let you go, I wanted to ask whether you can name us three best practice tips that you've learned from your time as the founder of Al Haraka. Well, uh, first, don't do it alone. Not, don't do it by yourself. Uh, do it in collective. Do it with another people, with another media. Uh, second one is uh, thinking money. Since the beginning, and if you are in a complicated context, please think and how to make money outside of your country, of your country. And the third one is think in your team and how, how they are affect, affect for the context and how their mental health is. Don't do it alone. Think of the money and remember your team. Yes. Laura Aguirre from Al Haraka, a feminist news website in El Salvador. Thank you very much for your time and your insights today. Thank you very much to you, to having me here. And that was Survive and Thrive, the Media Viability Podcast. Join us again next time. And please look at our show notes for more details. I'm Janelle de Malaon. Thank you very much for spending this time with us. Thanks for listening to Survive and Thrive, the media viability podcast. If you liked what you heard, please subscribe and make sure to hit like so that other listeners can find us as well. For feedback, send an email to dw-academy.surviveandthrive at dw.com. You can find all the information in the show notes.